Hi everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Growth Tarot. I'm Denise, I, or I should say Tarot and Astrology, <laughs> because this is your astrology reading for the week of June 12th through the 18th. And I'm going to be going through um, so many things. There's a lot going on this week. So we're going to have the moon transiting through the signs of Scorpio, Sag, Capricorn, and Aquarius. And we're going to start off the week on Sunday with the um, the moon conjunct the south node, which, wow, <laughs> that should be really helpful for activating past life issues that you want to clear and heal and activating things in dream time. Basically anything from the past that you want to heal or access your um, your past life gifts that are, you know, they're here in this lifetime with you, but we often have to... Um, let go of what's on top of the gifts is usually the way it works, right? The false beliefs, the self-doubt, all of those things. So anyway, so we've got that going on. And by the end of the week, by Saturday, the moon's going to conjunct Saturn and be activating that T-square that, uh, you know, where Saturn's in T-square to the node. So I'll show you all of that uh, as we go through the week. And then we also have... The Sagittarius full moon. So that's coming in at 23 degrees Sag. And um, so I'll, I'll talk about that. But anyway, it'll be uh, Tuesday just to make a note. And I'll get the timestamps in so you guys can go through the days as well. You know, if you want to go back and listen again. Uh, but anyway, it's at 4.52 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday the 14th. That'll be our full moon. So... Uh, other than that, I'm going to show you through the charts because it's no fun just looking at me talking. You, you need to see all this, right? Watch me draw the stupid lines. <laughs> Let me know, you guys, if that's distracting and you'd rather I just point it out with a chopstick. Uh, for learning purposes, you let me know what's what works best for you. And I'll, I'll go with, uh, of course, the, uh, the group uh, demand. <laughs> So, okay. Anyhow, let me grab this other camera, drop it down over here, and uh, switch cameras and show you these charts. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, so uh, Sunday morning, starting off at 6 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, these are the transits. But please notice that at 3 a.m., the moon was actually over here approaching the south node. So with the moon conjunct the south node, especially on this approaching side, this makes for really revealing dreams. <laughs> Just, you know, remember Scorpio is all about uh, you sometimes secrets, things that come through dream time that were previously hidden, and it helps us to transform and so we could have dreams about past betrayals that are clearing, um, past, well, goodness, what else could it be? Passions even with Scorpio, things that we're passionate about could come through. And because it, it's in opposition to, I'll get into this in a second over here, but it's in opposition, the, the moon in Scorpio you know, by 6 a.m. is on the other side. So we could, we could wake up with some major past life guidance, uh, past life awareness, which always, you know, helps us heal. And, and because it's opposing all of this, you know, here, you see how we have the, <laughs> the opposition to the, so the moon is opposing See how it's 24 degrees? It's opposing the North Node. It, it's in opposition to all of this. And the South Node is, a, it's just basically all of it. <laughs> just think of this whole stellium here. Okay, so so this is really important for, uh, for this morning, at least. Is Uranus helps us to wake up to what we value the most. Venus helps us to differentiate and and feel into making those, well, sometimes it's distinctions, which is usually more of a Virgo thing, but it helps us to compare. That's the word I was looking for. Helps us to compare 
I, what we want, we're waking up to what we want and we're comparing it based on what we've had happen in the past. And with the moon in yeah, 24 degrees uh, Scorpio there, it's, it's helping us to, you know, this would be about past relationships. Could we trust them? They were really intense and it helped us grow, but do we trust them? right? And as the moon moves this way, it's going, you know, in this direction, it's going to be in exact opposition to Mercury. And we might talk to them. We might, we might go, wait, hold, you know, I, I had this past life dream and it had, and you were in it. And I'm trying to figure out if it has anything to do with us, or maybe it's just me and my relationship with you. And, you know, if it's a solid relationship, you can talk about those things. Now, the moon is also for the day, starting off this morning, making an inconjunct to the sun. So remember, inconjuncts have to do with um, making an adjustment. So again, there's something something deep coming up from from the past, and it could have to do with a crisis in the past. It could have to do with a secret that's coming through because it came through in dream time and now you have something to talk about and you wonder like what I'm um, you know like I mean I once I had a dream that one of my family members we were we were in this big library but there were no books on the shelves so that told me symbolically that felt like there's no wisdom or no knowledge there's just um, empty shelves right and then this person was talking, and as they were talking, the, this forked tongue was coming out of their mouth. So then I realized, oh, and that's very scorpionic. It's like, oh, this person's just been lying to me, and there's no substance, you know. We were in this library with empty bookshelves, you know, wall-to-wall -wall big, just imagine, you know, no books. So there's no wisdom, no... Anyway, so that was quite telling. So things like that, you know, could come through. Could also help you get in touch with financial issues, um, you know, because we're dealing with values and then and then our shared resources when we're dealing with uh, that polarity of Taurus and Scorpio, like you know, our money versus their money, and do we want to mix our money with these people anymore, or um, is this a good bank to get a loan from, and you know, do they have good morals and ethics and values? Like, what's you know, what's their mission statement? Things like that. And with this adjustment to the Sun in Gemini, the adjustment will be that the information comes out, information is revealed, and then later on in the day, you can you know. So don't make a don't make a big rash decision, especially with all this Aries you know energy over here. But gather the facts. Right. Okay. So the other thing. So this this is an overview for what's going on this week with Jupiter here in this semi square to the North Node. Remember, semi squares bring in the need for action, and Jupiter is all about expanding into new territory when it's in Aries. Jupiter is always about expansion. It's often about healing. In Aries, it's all about, you know, like I've said before a million times, uh, being more brave and courageous and putting yourself out there. You know, positive self-expression is, is uh, um, well, <laughs> it can be negative, but make sure it's positive self-expression. And it can help you because of the semi-square here. There's gonna, you're going to need to take some action to move forward on your path. Now, I... We also have this sesquisquare here, which can, sesquisquares can be kind of stubborn, but you know, and it's coming from the south node here, and the moon shining some light on it there. Maybe, maybe it's kind of a a little bit of a conflict because Jupiter and Aries wants to go and go big and get it done, and. The south node, you know, the this stubborn area back here is like, oh, but wait, I remember in the past when I just went for it, I screwed up. Or they didn't receive me the way I intended. So there's nothing wrong because we're still in the Mercury retrograde shadow until the 19th, 18th, 19th, depending on your time zone. So be careful. 
It's okay to slow down and be careful, and especially with our words, right? Now, with um, Mars conjunct Chiron, man, this is energy moving in the direction of whatever needs to heal. With Chiron and Aries, we're in that realm of, of needing to heal our individual essence and and healing a place where we feel like we don't have any value or we don't like we don't matter or we're not worthy or we're you know we don't deserve basically it's you know it's not true it's all a big lie that's a big lie but because it's you know conjunct here there's an intensity it's up for healing moving that energy and healing and then with the semi square here to uh, Venus and Uranus this can really help us wake up to our self-worth because Venus and Taurus is all about, you know, knowing that you deserve all the kudos that life has to offer. So, yeah, and then let's see, I'm checking, the, checking these, um, I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Yeah, Jupiter has, it's, there's a contact point here. Uh, yeah, I, guess I got that to the north node about moving forward. Yeah, I did talk about that. Um, it's a little far away from Mercury, so it's not, we don't have that contact like we did prior to, I think, last week. But we're still, so we're still moving, let's see. Neptune square the sun. Do we have that tomorrow? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just move forward so that there's not, you know, like too many, too much highlighter stuff going on to be distracting. So, so what we have going on here with Neptune, so here's, here's the sun in Gemini, and then we have this square, which is a challenge that can turn into a strength. This has to do, I feel, with uh, gathering information so that you're not coming from a naive place where you don't have all the facts. This combo here, Gemini 2, Pisces. Pisces is so beautiful for all things having to do with spirituality and compassion and empathy and uh, all types of art, music. Anything that you want to devote yourself to because you're hooked up to source energy when you do it. You know, the, the things that you do that don't feel like work because uh, you're expressing who you are. And then gathering new information. This, this is a great aspect for channeling is, as long as you can sit down and, you know, let the information come through. I would advise to always only open up to the highest realms of love and light. I would not want to just sit down and just channel anything because then you're opening up to that and that's not good. Uh, you have to be very careful. And because we have Saturn here in trine to the sun, here's a beautiful flow of energy here to, you know, to the light into something that supports humanity. Now, trines are usually like an easy, you know, beautiful flow, but sometimes it's just a contact point. And with Gemini and Aquarius, we're, we're in that um, mental electrified uh, energy. So it can be a lot of information uh, so do your grounding work. What would help it is to tap into, see how we have the square to the, the nodes and Mercury. And we can actually bring in this whole nine yards here because it's all connected and it's all opposing that south node. And notice how the moon's moved forward into Sag. So now we're in that territory of moving towards, you know, We've got we've had the opportunity to get the deeper truth, and now how do we move forward with it in a way that serves uh, our new uh, the new plan or the new 
I guess the wisdom, the intuition and the wisdom that we've gained because now we know something on the deeper levels that we didn't know before, the moon crossing over that south node. <laughs> so, so what I was going to say before is the important thing is to stay really grounded, tap into this grounded Pluto in Capricorn and Taurian, all this Taurian energy down here. Tap into all of this earthly energy to stay very grounded because we've got a lot of fire and air and so we want to balance that out with water and with uh, you know staying grounded so what I do is a lot of just deep breathing and relaxing down into my body and that gets me out of my head and the more you can do that the more you'll just get direct guidance I mean I get guidance just doing stuff around the house. I just ask, like, you know, I'm walking around doing stuff and then just ask, okay, but what about this? What about this? And then I just, like, get the the information. Uh, but that's because of, you know, like years of, of practice and opening up and trusting. But uh, I love sitting in meditation as well. And then sometimes when I'm really tired, I just lay down and meditate because my body's like, oh, i got to be horizontal for a while. <laughs> right? You know? It's life when you're pushing 70. And anyhow, so, so yeah, so we've got all this energy here. And I talked about that already. That's going to be all week long. And as Jupiter moves closer to Mars, it's going to heat up even more, right? But then again, Mars is going to keep going this way and break away. So I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not so worried about that. It's, it was actually worse when Mars was back up here pushing into Jupiter. Now, what's prime on the mm, schedule, I would say, is to heal whatever deepest wounding is coming up. And, and you know, just know that the wounding is tied to a false belief that you brought into this lifetime. And as Jupiter gets closer to Chiron, we, we will have that deeper, deeper healing. But Jupiter's there holding space to heal like any... Any place where you don't feel, um, well, you can heal your abandonment issues with this energy here, with this um, uh, transit. We can heal our uh, impulsiveness with this transit. We can heal our fear of moving forward. Uh, or we can heal our fear of or a pain of maybe not being first and feeling left out, right? We can heal, heal that. We can create win-win situations with this type of transit, especially with this trying up here to the moon, especially for the day. Look at that. We have Jupiter trining the moon, okay? And then we also have Mars and Chiron here trining the moon. So... It's definitely a good day for guidance. I love it. And then the moon is in this in conjunct to the south. I'm sorry, the sun is in conjunct to the south node. So again, there's still that um, that little bit of, um, you know, still in orb. It was a, a, an approaching orb. Pretty soon it'll be separating. But so it's still a good day to make adjustments uh, based on the facts that come in, the information that comes in. And then uh, uh, Neptune right here in sextile to Pluto, that's, that's going to be an orb all week, of course, and actually longer, um, which will bring in more opportunities to have source energy, all the love and compassion and wisdom <laughs> and... Um, just everything beautiful in life, we have this opportunity to just continue to allow that to transform our souls and, and bring in, you know, our true... Pluto and Capricorn can help us bring in our true sense of our, our, like our own inner integrity, our own authority. As long as we're patient and determined and self-responsible, that's, that's always the key. And I love that starting off this morning, there aren't any hard aspects at all to the moon and Sag. That's, it's perfect. These are actually pretty good aspects here. So everything else is the same that I talked about 
on Monday. Now we have our uh, full moon, and it's a super full moon, so that means it's just you know a little closer to the to the Earth. So it should be nice and bright, especially in a fire sign. And it's at 23 degrees Sag, as you can see, at 4:51 a.m. Pacific. So adjust accordingly, you know, to your time zone. And so the aspects, let's look at the aspects to this full moon. So you can see everything's the same here. All these other transits are all the same. Uh, so yeah, everything here is all the same. So let's just focus on the full moon. So the full moon has an in conjunct. You can see here, right there, has this in conjunct down here to the north node. So the full moon is going to help illuminate our path in life, our path to more bliss and pleasure and safety and luxury. And it can help us be more patient and solid and trust ourselves more. And then it's also, it's binging up here to Pluto, Pluto trining the north node. So the moon in aspect to the north node is going to help us with this easy aspect up here to Pluto. Again, you know, manifesting what it is that you want in your life. And then the other thing we have is a square over here to Neptune. So this, this is about the square to Neptune is actually about uh, not going off the deep end with feeling if things haven't worked out with feeling like a victim, right? The Sag, the fiery Sag moon will help you turn this challenge into a strength. If you've had any issues around, and it's also supported by Neptune being in that trine to the south node, I. Uh, for you know for quite some time but the uh, square the challenge that can turn into a strength is just to allow yourself to be devoted to yourself but not being in a victim like don't go into victimhood don't let yourself just go all over the place and take self-responsibility for knowing that if you're feeling like a victim it's because you're victimizing yourself if you're feeling like a victim, it's because you're betraying yourself. You're betraying the best in yourself. If someone else has betrayed you, it's just a mirror to where you've betrayed yourself in the past. But you can turn it all around. To, to, to turn it all around is to devote yourself to yourself. And it doesn't mean that you're bad or wrong or that they're just the worst person in the world. None of that. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that your personality bumped up against theirs and you guys both projected your, your wounding onto each other. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's just, it, it's, those are the things that we have to go through in a relationship. And sometimes it ends relationships, and it should. And other times it's not. It doesn't end a relationship. It's just a, um, an opportunity in order to heal, which is really, really beautiful. So let's see. Anything else with the moon for the day? No. But notice that... Um, Notice that, well, the full moon is always a, an opposition to the sun. Okay, so that's an opportunity to balance out even more so our masculine and feminine within, which in the spirit world, there's never any separation between the masculine and feminine, ever. There's just, there, we're, we're solid and we're one there. But in, you know... Planet Earth, we're on this planet of duality and, you know, we're caught up in this like either or consciousness where our task is to get into unified consciousness where we're in our own inner unity, where we have uh, reconciled any split within, where women need to learn to assert themselves. They have their own independence. They are, they know they are equal and men need to surrender to their feminine side and learn to relax and listen and uh, <laughs> be more in their feelings than their heads. And, and so if you're, you know, if you're a woman that's very male oriented, you could have that issue to, to work with too. But it's all about being in alignment with your heart 
and and then your mind and your body and soul, your heart are all one, you know, when you get there. And then, then you're aligned with the spirit world as well, because that's who you truly are, and that's actually how to hook up, is to, you know, hook up with the spirit world, is to be in your heart, stay in your heart. But that doesn't mean that you give yourself away. And that's what this square here, so notice we have, you know, a T-square going on between Neptune and the sun and the moon, right? And again, it can turn into a big aspect of strength, but it's about, you know, gathering information, networking. Uh, Gemini is great with questioning things. Questioning a false belief from all different angles helps you to heal it. <laughs> right? And turn it around. And with Sag, we can be in that place where we're, we're free. We can free up some soul substance right here with this, with Neptune in um, Pisces. We can, we can become free and just unencumbered because Pisces in the most beautiful sense is just pure potentiality. That is, it's, just so big. Just, just think of, you know, Pisces is ruled by Neptune, and just think of the vastness of the ocean and how it flows and how it's connected to our intuition, as well as Sag is connected to our intuition, too. Um, Sag can be very optimistic and open and, you know, be very inspiring. It's ruled by Jupiter, and with Jupiter in, in um in Aries, we can have a whole new experience of, you know, of, of inspiration. Like if, you, if you're ever feeling limited and just kind of down and like things are just too finite, just ask your guides to inspire you and see what happens. See where they, see where they want you to go. <laughs> so that might be the adjustment there is to ask for inspiration and uh, hang in there and trust your guides more. You know, they should, if you're, if you're working with your highest level guides, they will be giving you consistent messages that are the same, that guide you in a certain direction. It, because they're trying to help you open up to more love and more light. And then here we have also, with the moon in sextile to Saturn, that's about manifesting something brand new and something much bigger that could connect you with new friends and new levels of humanity and a new group even. And because it trines down here to the sun, there's there could be an opportunity that really opens some doors for this uh, full moon. So this could last, you know, it could it could be starting uh, Monday and it could last easily and through Wednesday. And you know, when you open a new door, that doesn't mean that the opportunity goes away. You just kind of keep that door open because you've made those new friends and those new contacts. So let's see, everything else, let's see, the south, yeah, Neptune's still trying the south node, of course. Uh, Saturn is still in that T-square that we're working through, you know, which is, well, here, let me, t let me turn the page so that we're not, we're not putting too much on one page. Uh, just to try and keep things simple. With Saturn, Saturn here in this T-square, and remember Saturn's retrograde, and it, it's going to be retrograde until, I think it's October, no, Saturn, well, yeah, until October 28th, I think. But the squaring the nodes, that's over, well, it's... Not over till November, mid-November, that uh, Thanksgiving week. Mercury's involved, which is a little bit of the... I'm sorry. Uh, wait, 21, 22, 25. Mercury and Venus are involved. Yeah. And, you know, Uranus is such a big planet. It's like, well, it's not, not as big as Jupiter, but it's strong. It's in there, too. So, it's it again, it's this... Uh, waking up to creating a whole new reality, a whole new paradigm, and taking self-responsibility for something new and original to come through you, to uh, open up to being way, way, way more tolerant of whatever you have to go through to 
bring in, you know, to birth something from your, your past wisdom and bring it into tangible reality here with, uh, with uh, the North Node and Venus and, and Taurus. And, and then, you know, Mercury here is like finally it's come forward enough to be into um, uh, Gemini, which Mercury, well, actually that happened, I'm sorry, Mercury re-enters Gemini, was, it actually happened on Monday, well, later, it wasn't early in the morning, it turned out it was later in the day, but I missed it, here it is, 39 minutes, a bit. yeah, so that full moon, yeah, so this is huge right here. To get out of, for Mercury to get out of uh, Taurus and back into Gemini, yeah, that energizes things uh, on, a, on a new level. When it backed into Taurus, it helped bring in, because remember, Mercury's always the messenger. It helped bring in the messages to help you get in touch with what, what really mattered to you. And now that it's out through into Gemini, we're, we're in that realm of those new ideas coming in. Because now we know what we really want, now we get the ideas. After we know what we really want, we get those ideas to help manifest that. And and so we're going to get more messages about that. And Venus is there, conjunct the North Node, helping us to, and look how you know the North Node's going this way towards Venus. They're really tight uh, in orb, and they're going to get even tighter as Venus moves forward. Uh, we're going to have Venus in aspect to Saturn is really good for new ways to make money and to solidify some new goal to bring it into manifestation with the wisdom of the past, with your all the tools that you have in the past. Yeah. So Wednesday is an excellent day for that. And the sun is in trine. Notice how we've got 24 degrees here. So the sun is trining Saturn, right? And uh, all the other wonderful aspects are the same. But what's even more beautiful here is that the moon is now in Capricorn, which is another you know major planet of manifestation. And it's uh, sextiling. You can see how it's 9 degrees. I... Uh, or it's not sextile, I'm sorry, it's a Saturn. I, I'm sorry, it's a trine. <laughs> it's a trine. It's like having, the moon in Capricorn is like having Saturn up there, kind of like trining Venus and, and Uranus. I feel like it's, it, you know, brings in the whole thing. Yeah. So sometime in between Tuesday, the full moon in, um, or no, I'm sorry, oops, that was Monday the full moon in Sag, in between two, Tuesday morning with the full moon, then, you know, this with, in Sag, it's like, oh, yeah, I know the direction I want to go, and there, there's fiery energy to get it done. And then it starts moving into, okay, we can actually bring it in. We can bring it home. So the moon in Capricorn is excellent for that. It's excellent for hard work and discipline, there's a semi-square here to Saturn, so the action's going to, you know, need to be taken. Otherwise, you're going to feel frustrated. Nobody likes feeling that way. But if you just, you know, little baby steps, it doesn't have to go big. It, it's, it's, it's about just moving towards what you're trying to bring in, what you're trying to manifest. Really, really good energy for manifesting here. Okay, so... And then... With Thursday, make sure I've got this lined up here. Okay. With Thursday, the moon is conjunct. <laughs> Look at that. And it's going to get even tighter and tighter throughout the day. The moon's conjunct Pluto. Now, that's really powerful for manifesting. Really powerful. And we've got the aspect of the architect here from the wisdom of the south node. And then down here to the north node. And notice how Venus, it went so fast, it went over the north node. They're exactly conjunct, right? And of course, we have to bring in uh, Uranus and Mercury's there too, right? So Mercury, the messenger, all of these trines up here to the moon and Pluto, that is so powerful. 
Talk about doorways opening. Wow, look at that. Doorways opening for new money, new work, new uh, things that bring in a lot more pleasure. Uh, it could have us, though, knowing that we need to, you know, save money because uh, Capricorn can be very conservative and uh, Taurus needs safety and security. Oops, I am so sorry I did that. Safety and security and with the... Um, you know, knowing that that's a real need, this may have us in in that place of knowing. You know what? We need, I need to start saving money every month. I really need to be careful and budget. And I know how challenging that can be, especially when, you know, we just use credit cards to charge everything, and then we pay the credit cards off. Well, if you if you're not able to pay the credit cards off every month, then you know you're in trouble there. There's a little bit of trouble, and that that's where to work. And that may be the, the actual adjustment here because Pluto brings in power and the moon in Capricorn conjunct it will help you feel the power of what you, know, what you need and what you want to manifest and what you actually have. And, and then because there's that in conjunct with the sun, the sun will reveal whatever, whatever it is that you need to um, figure out to better like budget and especially you know, like finances because we do have... Taurus and Scorpio are all about our finances, right? They really are. Uh, let's see, anything else? So the moon is the moon is in this nice sextile. So the Pluto sextile Neptune. Well, now we have the moon shining, uh, illuminating that. Now, the moon can just be a mood and a feeling, but the moon always wants to protect and nurture. So what does it want to protect and nurture? Well, our, our power to manifest and to be in alignment with, with spiritual, uh, the spiritual aspects of our life. And, and then the, you know, the power of the past life gifts. To always allow your past life gifts to come through. The sun is still uh, trining Saturn up here. So again, there's more. It's like that Capricorn Aquarian energy uh, coming together for a new goal, new vision. Everything's the same there. Breakthroughs, financial breakthroughs, manifestation breakthroughs, new work, new jobs, things like that even if they're just a bunch of small gigs together, though all those little small gigs can add up. You know, there's a lot of people that work online. There's a, uh, there's, there's a website called like Upwork, uh, I think you, where you just like check in. I've, I've never tried it, but I've heard about it, uh, where you like check in every day and you see what little jobs there are and if you can handle it, you do that and you get paid and, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so Friday, the moon has moved across uh, Pluto, and it's now in Aquarius. And there aren't any hard aspects to it. Just notice that there's there's um, the trine here to uh, Mercury. Is it is Mercury and? Let's see. Hold on. I have to follow it down here uh, to Mercury. Yeah. So Moon Trine Mercury is really good for communication, networking, uh, net, networking with the, uh, the group. It's, uh, the Moon in Aquarius supports anything online. Yeah. Pluto Trine, we st and then, we, yeah, Pluto's trining. Mercury has moved forward enough to where it is trining Pluto. I like that. And it's also... Yeah, let's see. One, two, yeah, it's also turning 23, 20. Oh, yeah, and Venus. Because Venus is clocking forward, man. Look at her go. <laughs> yeah, again, I feel like it's networking and making money. Or networking with people that you value. Even if it's not making money yet, it, it, it could be someday. But it's coming together, bringing people together, right? And <clears throat> the sun, <clears throat> excuse me is still in, in conjunct to Pluto, and it will be, you know, for the rest of the week because it has to get past to that 28-degree orb. Uh, to, to get out of orb, it has to get, you know, into, actually into um, 
cancer, into the sign of cancer. So, but we're almost there. What's the first, the first day of spring this year? The summer solstice will be on the 21st. Uh, that's the day the sun enters cancer. First day of summer, right? So, but anyway, yeah, some adjustments because you're, you're networking and you're getting more information. And it, it's helping you in your power. It's helping you uh, purge what any controlling. This could be, this could bring in an aspect uh, or an adjustment where you're like, I don't want to work for that person anymore. Or I don't even want to talk, literally talk to that person anymore because they're so dang controlling, you know. Have you ever had those conversations where like they don't come up for air? Right? Like verbal diarrhea. And it's like, there's no listening there. You're just a sounding board for them to, you know. If there's no equal energy exchange. Now, if you're a therapist, that's your job is to listen. But if it's a friend and they never come up for air, you might wonder like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So sometimes that can be that uh, an adjustment around that. <laughs> uh, now the moon does have a sesquisquare to the sun. You can see that that red line here. That's a little bit of stubbornness, and that's where I was feeling that verbal diarrhea. So you know, be careful if that's it. There's also the semi square to Neptune, where you have to be careful because. If you let yourself be involved in a situation like that where you're just listening, listening, and listening, um, you're going to start to feel a little bit victimized. And and if you have to because, you know, you're in a group situation and you, you know, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I mean, I've been in that situation before. What's like a, my first priority is to never hurt anyone's feelings. And then, but then later on, I'm like, you know what? I don't think I want to talk to that person anymore because they just, you feel used. You get to the place where after enough time has gone by, you know, if it's taken like, uh, you know, more than 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour of your time, and they're still talking, you're like, okay, I have to go now. <laughs> I have to go now. And you've said that four times. Um, you have to be careful with that. You really have to be careful around that. Uh, boundaries, right? But that doesn't mean you don't still love them, right? <laughs> it doesn't change how you feel about them. It's just like, oh, I, I couldn't take any more, right? So, and then, let's see, to recap, any more with the moon? Nope, not seeing anything else there. Just to recap here with, with Saturn, maybe all this that we're listening to, th this could... This could have to do with more that's coming out with the, um, um, what do you call the J6 hearings. But remember, Saturn still squaring the nodes, and Venus is truly involved there. And of course, its opposition to the south node was always the case. But right here, this Saturn squaring, what I, what I really wanted to reiterate here is this brings in that important piece around, you know, with Saturn being in this T-square, Saturn in Aquarius, is it's asking us to uh, demand something from our government, Saturn government. And this has to do with new laws for safety that have to do with not just food, but guns, violence, guns, you know, things like that. Um it, you know, we're demanding it from Congress. House has already passed something. We probably won't make it through the Senate, but we still have to keep working. And we have to do our best to vote these people out of office who are holding up our, uh, str you know, our strength, the strength of our safety, right? We have to hold them accountable. We're, we have to hold them. We have to be accountable to ourselves, to hold them responsible for creating new laws. We have to teach these politicians like what our real values are. So, yeah, everything else is the same there. Jupiter, sesquisquare, the south node uh, has moved. Yeah, okay, so Jupiter, this, this is something here, right here. 
we're moving forward in a way that we're proving that our children matter. You know, th this is this is like the strength of um, David Hogg and the other the other ones that are working, fighting for new gun laws. And we have to stubbornly hold on to that because we know the violence of the past. And please don't take anything personally if you have uh, Saturn aspects because Saturn isn't, or what am I saying, Scorpio aspects because Scorpio does not have to be about violence at all. But it definitely uh, is often about crisis and things that are very intense in life and, and trust issues. So we have to work really hard and trust that we're on the right path to, you know, protect the kids. And we have to vote these idiots out of office who are just all about the money and they don't care about life. We just, we can't do that any longer. We're at a crisis point. We truly are at a crisis point. So, let's see. Uranus is clocking forward. And this, you know, opposition to the past, that's what that's all about. Are we going to wake up to safer gun laws and heal the past so that it doesn't keep happening in the future? And then Neptune there in this pretty much exact square to the sun, right there again. Are we going to allow our children to be victimized? Or are we going to unite in a conversation and network, create a big, strong network that uh, <laughs> this could be an adjustment to the NRA that is a foreign asset, right? This is the abuse of the NRA. This is the abuse of people in power just trying to get their money. And we have to unite and make that adjustment to constantly work towards that. In, until those laws are in place, until our kids are safe in school again. Kids and teachers, right? Like, no wonder we have a teacher shortage. Like, who wants to sign up for that? So, Saturday. So we end the week with the Sun conjunct Saturn, which illuminates that need for the new laws that I was just taught. So every single thing that I just gave voice to is at a fever pitch with the public. Okay? All of this to, and to the south. Everything I just spoke about that's it's even more illuminated by Saturday. I truly hope that that doesn't mean that another shooting happened, another mass shooting happened during the week. I, I just... We've got, you know, we really need to just keep praying for safety, but we also, you know, we have to enact those laws. We cannot allow this to happen anymore. And again, that's, you know, this Jupiter there. We've got to, we, we have to, in order to heal this situation, we have to stubbornly hold on to uh, enacting those new laws. And like I said, vote these dirty politicians out. And again, you can see it's still, we, you know, at the end of the week, all week long, we've still, we've been uh, moving into this approaching uh, in conjunct and the adjustment to the politicians. That's what we're shining the light on. So yeah, so gun laws, gun safety, uh, and the J6 hearings, of course, that's what the week is all about. Uh, now we do have this... Uh, so the so the sun is trining Saturn and the moon. We have that to look forward to. That again, uh, uh, it's just to repeat. Uh, this is shining the light on uh, the the voice of the 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 millennials and the uh, all the young people that now ha now can vote to vote these people out of office who will not abide by the safety that we need because all of this is right, you know, this is so important right here, this Pluto, Pluto power trining Mercury and Venus. Look how Venus is involved there. It's, yeah. All of that. It's, 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 yeah, the whole stellium there. 
it's all about safety. It really is. So yeah, so that's it. I don't see anything else that I haven't already covered. I'm looking just to double check, but no, it's the same thing. Just those big, you know, political adjustments, power adjustments, people in control adjustments. <laughs> vote, vote, vote. Fight, fight, fight. Okay, well that's it you guys. Sending lots of love. Big, big hugs. Bye. <laughs>